a neighbor who left this on my, my truck bumper. I came out one day and, and it says, never forget. It's a, a nice little you know, patriotic touch there. Um, never forget. And then in, in red ink, she had to use two different pens. Um, and, and it says, don't block the sidewalk again. So, I mean, as passive aggressive as it gets, right? And, uh, and I'm like, I'm, look, look, at, look at that. Look at my truck, firmly and completely within the defined boundaries of my driveway that I pay an inordinate amount of rent for, and then the public sidewalk that anybody could walk past. Even if you had like a double wide stroller, you're still gonna get past that thing. And I was so frustrated, I showed my boys, I'm like, would you guys look at this? What a Karen. <laughs> And, and have you guys ever used that label before? I'm sure you have. You guys are way too holy to use the label of Karen on anybody or anything, right? But there, there I was. I was using that label of a, of a Karen. And I said, this, this person's such a Karen. And then here, here's what was horrible, horrible, is that when we started walking around with my, with my boys around the neighborhood, walking our dog or whatever, um, they, they started putting this label on everybody. And they were like, I bet that was the Karen. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm like, oh no. They're following my example. They're, they're placing that Karen label on everybody that they see. We're no longer seeing the person for who they are. We didn't, mind you, we didn't know who it was that left it. We had our suspicions because there was this grumpy elderly lady with an extremely large dog that would walk around and scowl at us. And in fact, yelled at me whenever she would come along and I would be in the, she's like, I'm coming through, coming through, you better get out of the way. She was from New York. And she was, she was coming through, hey, you better make some room, better make some room over there. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, okay, okay. Like not just once or twice. So I had, I had a pretty good assumption that the person who left this was this woman. Who, who left this on our, our thing, but I, 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 was, I got alone with the Lord, and he was like, John, do you realize it's because you have now called that person a Karen? Now all they're going to see, all your boys are going to see is everybody through the lens of a Karen. They don't even know them. You don't even know them. But you've already got this label, and what I need you to do, John, is I need you to get rid of the label so you can see the person. Labels are lenses, aren't they? Here's some lenses that we tend to use in labeling people. And we got, we got like a large supply of labels. Here's some, religious labels. Someone who is not of the same religion as you. Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist. Oh, we label them. What about racial labels? Someone who is not of the same nationality as you. We will label them. Whether we do it overtly or whether we do it subconsciously, Political labels. Now, this is a pretty apropos one for right now. We're coming up to the midterm elections and you can hear everything and feel everything get into a fever pitch. How are you labeling your coworkers, your family members, and your friends that are of a political, different political persuasion than you? Socioeconomic labels, right? Whether you're rich or poor, you're automatically going to label the person that is different from you. Generational labels, come on. I'll do it. Those millennials, <laughs> right? A bunch of entitled freeloaders. Those boomers, right? So out of touch, so controlling, right? We, we just, these just, again, all of our words, we're constantly labeling people. Sexual orientation labels. Now, this is a big one, hot button. We can spend some time talking through this in our series of Wake Up. But we understand that what the enemy is really enjoying right now is being able to rip everybody's labels off and telling them you can label yourself whatever you want to be at any given moment. If you're a boy, you can talk, call yourself a girl. If you're a girl, you can call yourself a boy. And if you disagree with those labels, then there's something wrong with you. And in the middle of this fever pitch where they're trying to cram this stuff down the throats of our kids... You and I have to not fall into the trap the enemy is setting for us, or we can no longer see the person past their self-given label. We have to see the person, because I want you to look at this list and tell me which one of these Jesus did not die for, whichever one he did not die for, we can label them up one side and down the other. But if Jesus died for everyone behind those labels, then we need to see the person like Jesus did, don't we? Don't we need to be able to love them where they're at? 
Now, John, are you saying that this, this we shouldn't have any labels out? No, no, labels are very helpful. In fact, if my wife had her brothers, she would have a label gun, and she would go through labeling everything. She just loves label guns because it organizes everything, puts a thing in a place, and all, all that stuff. Labels are not bad. If I have two cans, one is dog food and one is green beans, and I'm about to make a meal for my family, it's going to be really important to have a label. They both look exactly the same, but I can't tell what's inside. Who can tell what's inside? Only Jesus can. He's the only one who can see the heart. Pass the label. He's the only one who can. And if you and I aren't careful, we're never going to see past the label. The labels become lenses. But Jesus said, I, I know the person. And I died for each one of them. And if you and I aren't careful, we're going to just make the matters worse because people are mislabeling themselves left and right. And then when you and I come along, instead of coming along with a love, reaches them where they're at. Instead of that, we're going to add some more labels on people. <laughs> And what I need us to do is understand that Jesus wants us to be able to love people. And now, love is not agreement. Please, please don't hear me. It's wrong. Love is not calling dog food human food. I, I'm, Jesus gets to define what we are. Okay? He gets to do that. But I am saying that if you and I aren't careful, the church is going to fall into a trap. We're going to be pushing away the very people that Jesus died for. 